They say that predicting our future is a dangerous game, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't have a plan, a vision for our country in 10 or 20 years' time. That's what the Scotland 2030 programme is all about, a chance to look beyond the confines of the parliamentary cycle, the debates of right here, right now, and a moment to envision our future. In this film, we'll get a glimpse of some of the innovative projects that may transform our future lives. From robotics to medical research, from game design to data crunching, virtual learning and energy solutions. We ask what science fiction can do for you, and we'll hear from a wide range of people from across the country about their ideas, their aspirations for our future Scotland. I've always believed that we have to think big. We have to think really, um, you know, out of the box. Uh, we have to think. We, we have to question everything, uh, every everything that is status quo, and say, can we do it completely differently? Can we do something uh, really outrageously different? And as part of that, um, the NASA Valkyrie project is about creating robots that have the ability to uh, pre-deploy missions on the surface of Mars. Well, if we think about a day in the life of, of my daughter, who's currently seven, in 20 or 30 years time, when she wakes, her artificially intelligent personal assistant will have information portrayed in holograms around her bedroom. Information and news stories or information about the day ahead that will be useful for her. Potentially a holographic personal trainer might arrive to take her through her exercises for the day. He takes the same risks that generations took before him. What, what our technology actually does, it gives a sort of a face to, to any voice. So if you can imagine in the future, you know, every person, every conversational AI system, everything will have sort of a, a virtual agent associated with it. And uh, there needs to be a technology to, to drive those virtual agents. And our technology is, is, is perfectly placed to be that. In 20 years time, we'll have fully functioning robotic assistance for most things we do in life, most domestic chores, uh, most repetitive tasks. Self-driving cars will have been around for at least a decade uh, by then. You know, they'll come within the next 10 years. That's going to see enormous societal change in the way we use uh, vehicles to, to transport ourselves and goods around. Uh, it will change the faces of our cities uh, beyond belief. I think the big challenge over the next 10, 20 years and beyond is to make sure we harness the benefits of technology in a positive way without falling into the trap where that atomizes society in a way that wouldn't be positive. But I think the benefits will outweigh the disadvantages. Chris Brookmeyer has just published a novel which toys with ideas of artificial intelligence and technology which manipulates minds. So how might our reality be inspired by science fiction? I think the ability to enhance our um, cognitive abilities or certainly our, our memory through um, some sort of digital enhancement, I think that's a, a technology that is potentially within our grasp uh, in the next few decades and, and that would be something that would allow us to process more information and, and, and therefore uh, allow us to understand each other better because I think that it always has to start with that. I think that when we look at visions of futures, novels that have contained the future, um, they've often been scary, 1984, Animal Farm, that kind of a vision of a future, but it is possible to imagine a future that is, that is brighter in lots of ways that has a whole set of young people coming up that care passionately about the trees and about the world that they live in. I, I write some Judge Dredd and I've been reading a lot of old Judge Dredd from the early 80s and it's really funny because um, you read this stuff and you, you have to keep reminding yourself that a lot of the stuff in the stories didn't really exist in the 80s. No one had mobile phones and tablets and there were no such things as holograms and driverless cars, but they're all in the story. And it's almost like the two Scottish guys that, that used to write Judge Dredd, John, John Wagner and Alan Grant, they kind of invented 
you know, the, the, the 21st century. Yeah, we always think that science fiction has got an evil intent, but I would like to see things like nanotechnology be used for good intent, to try and make us healthier, to, to live within our environment and within our means. Whatever the future, it will need new energy solutions, and that will have an impact on our environment. Really what rewilding is, is a forward-looking, aspirational vision about what Scotland should or perhaps could look like. And in 20 years, if we do what I consider to be the right things, then we would have more native woodland, for example. We've got just 2% of Scotland's original wild wood left. We will have restored peatlands, and many of which have been drained and overplanted with conifers. With, you know, a third of the landmass of the UK, but less than 10% of the population. We're, we're quite an empty land in lots of places, but we're still emptying people out of the countryside and bringing them to our cities. I want people in Scotland in the future to be able to be whatever they want to be, wherever they want to be it. And I think technology can help us do that. Looking at um, the elimination of poverty and the eradication of inequality, uh, I would like to see um, technology which uh, releases uh, energy sources which can be made uh, at a very low cost or even free to people, especially uh, those people who are uh, living in poverty. By 2030, 50% of the energy that we use for transport, for heat and for electricity will come from renewable sources. And the great thing about that is that we've got world leading knowledge and know-how here in Scotland that we can hopefully take out to the rest of the world as well. The whole energy system will be transforming over the coming decades uh, and Tidal is going to be playing a key part in that. Um, what we're seeing is the emergence of new renewables as the system becomes cleaner and more sustainable. We've already seen big uh, advances in wind, solar technology, tidal is going to be one of the next big things. As we look ahead in any reasonable scenario, we see that energy demand for oil and gas will be about two thirds of what we're, what we're using currently. Um, so we think that actually oil and gas can play a very supportive role as we move to a lower carbon economy in Scotland. And how can we work towards a society that is happier and healthier? Principally, I would certainly like to see it as a, an egalitarian nation, a nation which I think is sort of fundamental to the Scottish character. I mean, we have been tribal in our times, but our tribalism is gone. But what we have inherited, and certainly I think our enlightenment shows, that we have a spirit of egalitarianism. Scotland has been a welcoming country for refugees, but there is a lot, of to, a lot to do about their condition while they're staying here in Scotland. We need to work more about the homes where they live, the areas where they live, to make them feeling comfortable and welcoming. So many people who aren't able to do the things they want to do, aren't able to engage in communities, in, in society, because there are barriers to them. And many of those barriers are around physical ability, we, we, we stand here in, in 2018, I think the, the wheelchair is over 100 years old. The, the, surely our technological um, advances can come up with things that make, make it possible for everybody to have access to, to anything and everything. So this is a prosthetic hand that a person who has lost a limb would wear. Uh, and as you can see here, um, there's an EMG sensor that senses the muscle activity on my, uh, on my skin. When each of the fingers should stop closing, um, that lies um, in the brains or the AI uh, of the robot hand. So I don't have to individually control the, f the individual fingers. I think sci-fi has got a lot of potential inspiration for us. The one that particularly uh, sticks in mind is the Star Trek idea of being able to scan somebody for health. And actually there are research groups who are looking at that already. So no touch technology in terms of being able to diagnose conditions. And I think we're getting to a stage where we'd be able to reliably have a camera that could uh, survey people as they come into an emergency department or into a GP surgery. We're also going to see, I think, much more healthcare delivered remotely. And for a country where a fifth of the population lives in a rural or island community, that will be hugely important so that people don't have to always go to hospital for treatment. Often that treatment can be delivered to them 
in their own home. Here we are part of an MRC centre for medical mycology and we are, we are targeting this problem of fungal pathogenesis to have cheaper options and to have less drug resistance. So if you look in the news, you can see a lot of people are talking about antimicrobial resistance. So understanding how these bugs respond to such drugs, it's the target of our research. And what about schools, museums, galleries, the future of how we see ourselves? One of the things that we have to stop is apologising for ourselves. I want to see a Scotland where we don't have to describe ourselves as Scottish in order to get by. Because uh, I, I think that's one of our weaknesses when we have to say, I'm Scottish. Uh, it should be ipso facto, it's, it's, we are who we are, this is who we are. Things like tr automatic language translation. A class in Scotland may well be able to communicate directly with a class in China, with translation happening right then and there during the collaboration. So it's very exciting to see how our children could learn in the future. The current education system is very much based on an industrial society, a society that has a very particular economic model attached to it, and that's not the society of the future, I don't think. We want our education system to be one that equips all of us to do the things that we know humans are good at, at caring for each other, at creating and fulfilling our creative potential. But I'm somebody who believes in education as a matter of principle, so it isn't just about creating uh, units of production for the economy, uh, it's about education uh, that gives people wider horizons, that introduces them to different worlds. The, f the future um, of education has to make arts and creativity have a very, very, very strong role. It has to be as important as the three R's, or as maths, as science. And the future is also collaborative. The future is about finding surprising connections between the world of science and the world of poetry, between the world of football and the world of maths, between the world of music and the world of theatre. I've seen in the very short time that we've been developing V&A Dundee uh, that uh, how we can pr present things through some sort of enhanced virtual uh, digital reality uh, has an enormous power to capture people's imaginations, get people involved and to get people really thinking about what uh, the future may be. It's building by the Japanese architect Kengo Kuma. I think people think of is a sort of futuristic vision, if you like. It's of, it's of, of a very dynamic uh, form. It uses quite complex technology uh, in its construction. One final question. If you could see any one thing invented in the future, what would it be? I think it would be a solution to plastic and I think uh, it would be invented by a Gaelic speaker who writes the recipe in Gaelic and everyone then would value the language. Those kind of uh, nanorobots that are being talked about at the moment that will appear, uh, that can really start to uh, address disease and diagnostics in a way that we've never been able to do. Douglas Adams in uh, one of his Hitchhiker's novels um, postulated the idea of the point of view gun that would force you to see things from someone else's point of view and I sometimes think maybe uh, certain politicians in, in this world could do with an empathy device, something that forced them to empathise with people. Dream sci-fi invention would be to transmit energy over long distances by laser efficiently so that you didn't have to use copper wire. I mean my big ambition is to have potholes that fill themselves. But the real problem with that is that Liberal Democrats wouldn't have anything to put on our election leaflets. It would be something that I was promised as a child uh, when I was watching reruns of Star Trek, and that is a teleporter. I want a teleporter. I think it's outrageous that we're now slower in getting to places than we used to be. Moving away from the, the cyberpunk dystopias that maybe gave us the world we live in now, I think moving forward as a science fiction writer and artist, it is really important to think about what kind of future do you want to live in? What kind of future do you want your kids to live in? How amazing could the world be? And maybe if we write that story, there's a chance it's going to filter down to the people who can make it happen. This is only the beginning, a glimpse of what is possible. 
Now we want to know your ideas of how we make this unique country a better place. What is your vision for our future Scotland?